Stories are the reasons we never knew existed. My name is Osadumebi, and every week I will tell you a short story written by a Nigerian writer or author. That's the long and short of it. So without much ado, this week's story is by Etudaye Musa Abdulaziz, and it's titled The Man I Married. He glared at me. I glared at him. We both continued glaring at each other for a few seconds in the parlor. This husband of mine, who used to be so loving and caring, who would proudly adorn me with different words, which were sometimes new to my ears. He had just brought Amina, my co-wife, into our home a few weeks ago after they got married. Good morning. I muttered, turning around to go back into my room. Good morning, Mama Aliu. How is Aliu doing today? He replied, adjusting his shining starched cap. Oftentimes, I would jokingly call him a shower head because of how every cap he wore fitted his head comfortably. I let go of the curtain which I had raised to enter my room and turned to face him. He is doing fine. You just remembered that you have a son now, Ko? When was the last time you asked after him? I grumbled as though we were quarreling. This is not necessary at all. I see Aliyu every day and I am sure he is doing fine. He fired back with a countenance which showed he wasn't bothered by my question. He moved towards the mirror hanging on the wall. Standing before the mirror, he rubbed his hands on his slightly pot-bellied stomach. You always find a way to ruin my happy moments. Please, I have no time for this now. I will be going to the market with my Amina. She will be making me my favorite today. He said and smiled sheepishly with no remorse. I stood there, wondering if my husband was the same gentleman who had promised to open wide the sky for me to see the color it carries inside, if it would fetch me happiness. This same man who would, on many nights, get down on his two knees with a smile as wide as the expanse of the sky to tell me how much he loved me, before we filled the room with goosebumps, moans, sweat, and laughter. Amina came out of her room, trying to settle one end of her veil beneath her chest. Good morning, Mama Leo. That greeting was directed at me, but it was obvious she didn't want our eyes to meet. She quickly skipped her face away, looking towards him. Good morning, Amina, I replied sluggishly, as if those words were too heavy for me to utter. I slowly moved near one of the sofas and sat with a heavy sigh. I looked from my end as they both stood before the mirror, adjusting their partially coordinated outfits on their bodies. Ami, my love, he said. <laughs> yes, my baby, she replied with an added pip in her voice to make it fancier. You look so beautiful that a mere look at you would get a man hooked in the spell of your love. He whispered and accompanied those words with a grin, not minding my presence. <laughs> Thank you, my baby. Her face beamed with so much radiance as she appreciated him. I'm me, baby. <laughs> yes, my love. Mm -hmm. Please, let's add game to that list. I hope you know that you will be preparing my favorite today. Since we brought that mortar and pistol to this house, we have not used it for once. Yes, I have done that. Oh, I almost forgot to include the yam pounding machine. Hmm? What is that? Yam pounding machine? It is an electronic machine used to pound yam. It is very fast and less stressful to use than the motor and pistol. 
I have never seen where a machine is used to pound yam. My mother never did that. Nothing beats a pounded yam prepared using a mortar and pestle. Why do you have to prepare a pounded yam for me using a machine? My people don't do it and I will not accept it. I will never eat a pounded yam prepared by a machine. His thunderous voice made my heart quake, but I pretended as if it was nothing. Haba, there is nothing wrong with it. Amina defended. I don't want to know if there is anything wrong with it or not. All I know is that I will not eat a pounded yam prepared by a machine. I am married to a woman, not a machine. I cannot pound yam with mortar and pistol. I have never done it before. And I don't have the strength to do that now. I stood up, watching them as they both continued to trade words expressing their likes, dislikes, and acceptance of how and what can be used to pound yam. Like drizzling rain, their words stealthily put out the fire which was sending billows of love into the atmosphere earlier. I remembered how my husband would complain about my inability to use the mortar and pestle to make a pounded yam for him. He would often say, A real woman is known for her ability to make a variety of foods for her husband. Woman! Do not tell me that you cannot use mortar and pistol to make a pounded yam. Are you not a woman? Are you different from other women? I will not accept that. Maybe you are ready for another woman to take your place. <laughs> he would always lament whenever he met anything other than the favorite he was expecting. A glorified name for pounded yam. I had once suggested to him that we buy the yam pounding machine. He got so infuriated. Do you think I married you to be using machines for me? What is your use if you cannot make a pounded yam with your bare hands? He had responded angrily before storming out of the parlor that day. It is either we buy that machine or you tell Mama Ali you to. Amina grumbled. My attention quickly returned to their conversation. I glared at them. Our eyes met and theirs swiftly looked away with heavy guilt clouded on their faces. The daggers flying from every pore on my skin caught that stupid idea up instantly. I stood there, irritated by the abhorrence of a man who sees nothing of a woman except her ability to prepare a pounded yam with her bare hands. Why would a man tie my relevance as a woman to the mere procedure of food making? Is that part of culture or tradition? I asked myself those questions, wondering if Amina knew she was married only because I couldn't make pounded yam with my bare hands. Etudaye Musa Abdelaziz is a program's associate with Bridge Connect Africa Initiative. He is an alumni of United People Global Sustainability Leadership Fellowship 2021 cohort and the co-founder of We Can Africa Initiative. Abdulaziz earned a degree in mass communication from Bayero University, Kano. He writes from Kano State and can be found on Instagram at etudaye underscore ma and on Facebook as etudaye Musa Abdulaziz. Details will be in the episode description. If you've got a story you would like to be featured on this podcast or a published book you want to make into an audiobook, send me a message at Osadumebi on either Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Twitter. I look forward to collaborating with you. And if you've enjoyed this week's episode, tell a friend that stories are a good escape for a few minutes each week.